What is it? So the first game of 2019 that I check out on this series is a retro style arcade shooter, which I didn't expect to be doing, but Horizon Shift 81 is exactly that. To the point where, in the options, you can actually change the settings so that the display is that of a CFT style arcade machine. It's wonderful. I love it. Uh, so I got sent this. This is on the Switch version that I was playing. And um, it's, a, it's a proper old school arcade shooter in the style of Galaxian, Centipede, Space Invaders, etc. But it has been fully juiced with all the sort of lovely visuals that we got from things like Geometry Wars when that first came out. It had that sort of feel to it. Um, I will say this. I am not an arcade shooter type of guy, and playing this at first I thought, ah, yeah, it's similar fare to what I used to play many moons ago, haven't played it for a while, I get stuck in. And uh, it's a really unique mechanic of, instead of being at the bottom of the screen, travelling forward, shooting upwards, you're actually dead centre of the screen, you have both sides, both ends, top and bottom, to worry about as you defend your horizon line from the incoming and impending alien hordes which come in a variety of different styles you have the fairly simple space invaders style here but they, they get bigger, they get scarier they come in patterns, waves, some stay at a distance and attack with rockets others are meteorites that will destroy the horizon line allowing you to fall off it um, not to say that you're completely stuck to the horizon line because you can not only dash but also jump off of it um, and there are such power-ups and pickups that allow you to double jump, double dash. Uh, the, the dash mechanism is used to clear the horizon of enemies that want to come and impose on your decrees and take your land. Um, really, you're point farming. It, it's uh, The rounds progressively become longer, it's time, so it's you're not trying to be a specific enemy to get off of it or an amount or anything like that, it's simply time, so it will throw a variety of different things at you making sure that when you're playing it, it'll never be the same and you really will play it quite a lot and see the same levels quite a lot as it is punishingly difficult. I mean, I put this down to easy. As I said, I don't play these kind of games and easy is really hard. I mean, in recent times, the difficulty spike has been something that people have enjoyed in gaming, things like Bloodborne, Dark Souls, etc. that really make you want to get good and that get good mechanism is something that you are going to be really using when you play Horizon Shift 81 because you will die a lot. Something else that's really strong for the game I thought was the sound effects. Uh, I mean I love the music, the sound track itself is great but also the individual blips, blops and all those old school sounds that are just lovely and juicy. So I have to say the Switch version that I was playing looked wonderful in handheld mode. I mean, the TV, uh, when I put it onto the full screen, looked great, but handheld it just looks so special, especially with the extra glow and all the extra effects that I put on there. Um, I'll say this for it, the, as far as the game mechanics go, I never actually used the jump enough. I don't think uh, it's something that really felt comfortable on the Switch. I've, I kind of felt like one of the buttons at the top, maybe an extra trigger should have been a jump as opposed to both being dashes, but that's a very minor sort of complaint about a game which performs all of its other core mechanics really well. The blasting's great, the bosses are fantastic and varied and they really sort of switch up the play. Even though they're one every five rounds, it took me hours to get to the second one because of the difficulty ramp. <laughs> I, I was struggling, even with the power-ups, you can get the turrets, you can get your orbital moon blaster thing and it sometimes it just doesn't matter. It does allow you to stack your bonus power-ups and you also get points farmed bombs which you can release intermittently as you fill up the bar at the bottom of the screen which will help you along the way. Um, I say help. I mean really there's a there's a degree of luck to a game like this and I don't have a lot of luck so I didn't really get very far. I think I played this for a total of 7 hours, maybe level 19 at the most, 
at the very most and my thumbs were bleeding <laughs> but there is a satisfaction to finally beating that boss and getting past that extra level. I mean, as you start to discover more and more enemies and more varied types, you find more and more different ways to die, which is fun as well. I really enjoyed the Switch version that I played. It's coming out soon on PS4 and Xbox One uh, from Flump Studios, an indie dev that I will definitely be paying more attention to in the future. And uh, I think you should as well, especially if you like uh, seeing game over screens like this. And this! Or maybe this one! Or how about that? It's on the Nintendo Store right now, go and get it and I will see you in the arcade! Got any coins? Got, got any coins on you?